Hello and welcome to another book talk. My name is Victoria and in this video I'm going to be talking about The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weissenberger. If that's how you say your name. I feel like I do this in every book talk. I'm like blah 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 if that's how you say their name and then I always end up apologizing so maybe I should just do more research or something and learn how to say people's names. But anyways I'm going to be talking about The Devil Wears Prada and why I actually liked the movie better than the book which I know is blasphemy for a reader. <laughs> Let's get into it. So I actually read this book because I love the movie so much. I've seen it many times and I recently watched it with a friend a couple of weeks ago and was like, oh, I wonder if the book is any good. Um, but you know that I don't read that much contemporary, so I'd never really looked into it until my friend bought it for me after we watched the movie a few weeks ago. So I did end up reading it and as I said in my intro, I liked the movie better. Now is that because I watched the movie first? Maybe. Or is it just because movie was better. You decide though. Let's talk about it. If you haven't heard of this book or the film, it follows Andy Sachs who is a recent university grad and it is her dream to work at the New York Times. However, while she's looking for her first job, she is struggling to find one, um, but she responds to a call for an assistant to Miranda Priestley who is the head of Runway Magazine. Andy knows absolutely nothing about the fashion world and does not exactly have an interest in fashion, but for some reason Miranda decides to hire her. So this book follows her crazy adventures being an assistant to the editor of one of the top fashion magazines in the world and as you read you discover that that woman is actually the devil herself, or at least close to, hence the title. She's kind of a monster boss, she makes Andy do all sorts of things that are completely inappropriate for her job, and punishes her for not understanding instructions that were never given. But Andy is told if she sticks this job out for a year, Miranda will put in a good word for her at any business in the publishing world that she wants. So despite how nightmarish the job is, Andy sees it as a vehicle for working her dream job at the New York Times a lot quicker than she might otherwise have been able to. This review will contain spoilers, so if you haven't read this or seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled for either of them, then I would recommend you go do that before coming back. That said, let's talk about it. First I'm going to talk about the things that I liked about the book, and then I'm going to talk about the things that I didn't like and why I thought the movie was better and or fixed some of the problems I had with the book. So what I liked. This book has such an engaging voice. From the very first page I was completely drawn in and could not put it down. The main character is very funny, very sassy, and very savage. So even when there were no other characters really in the scene, it was hilarious just being in her head. There are a lot of time jumps in this book, whether it's going months ahead or starting a few weeks and then retracing its steps. Its chronology is a little bit chaotic, but it was written so well in such a way that it was not hard to follow in the slightest, and it actually made the plot more exciting and enjoyable. As well, it was a little bit darker than the movie. It talks about eating disorders and alcoholism, and the main character's best friend actually becomes an alcoholic over the course of this book, and it digs in a little bit to kind of the consequences of that. So yeah, a little bit darker material than the movie, culminating in the climax of this book where Andy tells Miranda to fuck herself. We certainly didn't get that in the film. <laughs> that said, aside from the plot and the voice, I did have some issues with this book. First of all, the main character, Andy, is extremely unlikable, as is her best friend, Lily. They are both essentially garbage humans that are selfish, entitled, and disloyal, both to each other and to their romantic partners. Now, in Lily's defense, she is not a monogamous person, so it's not like she's actually cheating on anyone, so that's fine. But Andy, the protagonist, does have a committed boyfriend in this book, and yet spends a lot of it talking about this other guy she thinks is hot without actually really acknowledging how disloyal she's being. She doesn't actually physically cheat, but her thought process surrounding it is, oh yeah, I guess I have a boyfriend, but it's fine to just examine how hot this guy is and flirt with him and go on dates with him. Where Lily, her friend, becomes a garbage human is that her advice is, what's the point in being monogamous? Just go fuck this other guy. The thing that's irritating is Lily is not monogamous herself, so that's fine. Like, that's the way that she's chosen to live, and she She's made that clear to her partners, but she knows that that's not how Andy has chosen to live or what Andy has communicated to her partner, so she's essentially encouraging her best friend to cheat. As well, Andy just comes across as extremely entitled. While Miranda is kind of a terrible boss, a lot of the things that Andy complains about are just normal tasks assistants are expected to do. Things like hanging up her boss's coat in the morning or going on coffee runs are very typical 
level of assistant work, especially if, if you're a personal assistant to someone. A huge part of Andy's complaint is that she's not doing actual work-related assistanting. She's doing things like dry cleaning, babysitting, whatever, which I can kind of see because, okay, she does work for Runway, but at the same time, she's the second personal assistant to Amanda Priestley. So for me, that title just sounds like that's a normal part of the job, and it was explained to her early on. And yet the whole time she complains about how unfair it is that she has to do work for Amanda outside of just sitting at her desk and answering the phone. So as someone who has worked as an assistant, both in the legal field and as a teaching assistant, to me this just came across as extremely immature whining because it's just part of being an adult and having that job. Another thing that I liked better about the movie is that if you've seen it, you will call Andy gets very good at her job. She makes sacrifices in her personal life, but slowly over the course of the film becomes the perfect assistant to Miranda, to the point where Miranda looks at her and says, you remind me of a young me. This is kind of the emotional climax of the film. It's kind of the point at which Andy realizes, yes, she has become that, but that's not at all who she wants to be because Miranda is a toxic human that nobody actually likes. However, in the book, Andy never actually gets good at her job. She spends the whole novel screwing it up, maybe some Sometimes succeeding but mostly getting things wrong. Even up to the end there's this big Paris trip where in the movie Andy is living at the height of her success and has become a loyal employee to Miranda. In the book Andy spends the whole time being like fuck I don't want to be here and being really bad at her job and then her best friend who is the alcoholic she got into a bad accident from drunk driving and ends up in the hospital in a coma and in the book, then Andy is called and her parents want to know if she's coming home to see her best friend and she says, no, I'm gonna stay and finish this trip because there's nothing I can do, she's in a coma. <laughs> I'll be home in a few days. Miranda hears this conversation, wants to know what it's about, and Andy tells her, my friend is in a coma, but I'm choosing to stay here and support you. And then we have the moment where Miranda says, you remind me of a young me. To me, it just didn't feel like a deserved moment because Andy never got good at her job. She never actually became a success in the fashion world. She just whined and whined and then made a disloyal decision to her friend. Because of that, Andy's happy ending doesn't really feel deserved. Once she says fuck you to Miranda and gets fired, pretty much immediately she starts getting calls from other places, from people who also hate Miranda, which was kind of funny, but essentially she becomes a journalist and a writer almost instantly after this with no ramifications for what she said to Miranda and walks right into her dream job. Because she never found success in the other job and it was much less of a realization of who she truly wanted to be, I didn't really feel like Andy really learned anything or became a different person and so it didn't feel satisfying satisfying to me that she got everything she wanted. Whereas in the movie, we see that Andy has everything before her. She could become Miranda if she wanted to, but she chooses to walk away from that life because she realizes some things are more important to her. So then when she gets everything that she wants, you're kind of like, you go girl, like you've become a better person. But in the book, like I said, there's no sense of that. Essentially what happens is Miranda says one more dickish thing and Andy just goes, that's the last straw, I can't take it anymore. So basically the reason she quits is because She's just had enough of Miranda being horrible rather than quitting because she realizes that there's more important things in life. So in that sense, I think the movie actually brought out the book's themes a lot better than the book did. One other thing that I didn't like was the conversation around body image and eating in the book. The unhealthy attitudes about bodies and food are never really addressed. Andy spends a good portion of the book talking about how she thinks that 115 pounds is a normal weight for someone who's nearly six feet tall, um, despite the fact that the fashion world says that she's fat. Now, of course we know that high fashion does have some unhealthy attitudes towards weight and bodies, but it's never addressed that Andy at the start before she's even in the fashion world is actually already underweight on the BMI chart. She thinks that her normal weight is normal before entering the fashion world, but actually, scientifically, her normal weight is bordering on unhealthy already. And once Andy leaves the world of fashion, it's never addressed that the mentalities that she developed while she was there are actually in any way unhealthy. There's just an ongoing conversation and obsession with not eating and with losing weight, again, that's never actually addressed as deeply problematic. I think that it is implied in the subtext, but considering how prevalent this message is in the book, I would have liked it to be 
more directly addressed because Andy is so thin already at the beginning of the book. Rather than looking at it like unhealthy body image, the way that the book deals with it is Andy just was stressed out and didn't eat because she didn't have time on her job and the whole environment about not eating because you need to be thin that exists in the fashion world was kind of just skimmed over. So overall, I prefer the movie, though I did enjoy reading this book a lot. While movie adaptations are often not as good as the book, I thought this movie did an excellent job of taking the seeds of greatness that were in this narrative and just bringing them out a little bit more in a more satisfying way. As well, the movie did a great job of redeeming a rather unlikable protagonist and bringing out the themes that make this story so interesting. So those are my thoughts on The Devil Wears Prada. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment below with your thoughts about this book or the movie. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.